Hello everybody, this is Donna Lewis bringing you another Crow, Children Respecting Ohio's Wildlife Program, also called Reading in Nature because we always try to cover a book um, about nature. So today we're talking about the meandering marsupial. So who is that? It is the possum. So we're gonna talk about possums today. It's one of my favorite animals, really cool, and I'm gonna talk about why after we read the book. So this is kind of a long book, more probably for a little older kids than young, um, but you can always pause and restart the video, right? Because you have that ability. It'll be on YouTube and Facebook. All right, there's a possum in my backyard by Gary Bogue, illustrated by Chuck Todd. Really cute book about the possum. So here we go. It's a lot of pretty pages. All right. One morning, a mother possum was late getting back to her nest after a night of hunting for food. She was carrying her babies on her back. She ran along the top of a fence so hard that one of them bounced off. It landed on top of its tail and broke it. This left a kink in the very tip that would always make it easy to tell her apart from other possums. The mother possum was in such a big hurry that she didn't even notice. Uh-oh. So there's mother possum traveling around at night probably towards nighttime to find food. And one of the possums, the babies, has fallen off. So this little baby falls off and falls to the ground. Poor little guy. And breaks his tail. When the baby possum fell into their backyard, the greens were in the kitchen. Dad, Dad, shouted Nathan. He ran to the window and pointed. A baby rat just fell off that big rat's back. That's a possum, silly. It's a marsupial, said Ashley. She was Nathan's older sister, and she was very smart. The females have pouches for their tiny babies, like kangaroos. The older babies ride on their mother's back, and if they fall off, she leaves them to grow up by themselves. It sure looks like a rat to me, said their father. It also looks like it broke the end of its tail. Nathan knew Ashley was right, but it was nice of Dad to agree with him. So yes, possums do look a little bit like rats. And so the Green family sees this little possum there. The next morning, just as she did every day, Mrs. Green unlatched the door to let Rocky, the family dog, outside. The little possum was gobbling up dry dog food from a bull on the patio when she heard the dog come rushing out. He started barking like crazy when he spotted her at his food dish. The little possum opened her mouth wide, showing her dog, showing the dog her shiny, white, pointy teeth. Possums don't like to fight, and showing off their teeth is usually all it takes to make another animal back off. Meanwhile, the neighbor's big gray cat sat on the fence watching quietly. So the dog is not too happy about the possum stealing his food. Possums do enjoy some dog and cat food. And then there's the cat next door just kind of checking out the possum. Get away from my food, Rocky barked at the possum. Get away from my food, the gray cat hissed at Rocky. It was a very big cat. It suddenly leaped at the dog. Rocky let out a big yelp and scurried back through his dog door. The gray cat walked over and sniffed noses with the possum over the dish of dog food. Do you mind if I join join you, purred the gray cat. So the cat's like, dog, get away from my food, even though it was dog's food. The cat was going to take it. And then the cat's like, hey, do you mind if I eat along with you? Now, some of you may have seen your cat outside eating with possums. It does happen. Cats rarely mess with possums once they're a little bit bigger. And I guess that possum's too big of a size for the cat to mess with. One night, while out for a stroll, the possum met some of her neighbors. It was a warm night in the middle of July, and lots of creatures were roaming around. She sniffed noses with the skunk. Boy, do you smell, each of them thought. A gopher snake hissed at her and told her not to come too close. A fat snail disappeared into its shell when she sniffed at it with her pointy nose. A huge raccoon ignored her. A gopher took one look at her and dashed back down its hole. The gray cat sat on the fence watching quietly. So by gopher, they probably mean groundhog. Now, little possums can hang from their tails, but big possums can't. They're too heavy. So here's some of the animals that she's meeting along the way. Most nights just before dark, the little possum smelled something wonderful. The greens cooking dinner. 
One night, she followed the delicious smell right up to Rocky's dog door. She had seen the dog use the swinging door many times. She pushed against it with her nose and followed the wonderful smell into the house. What are you doing in my house? Barked Rocky. He charged across the room at the possum. The possum ran under a table. The barking dog scrambled right after her. They both ran under the chair where Ashley was reading. So that's a mess. The possum got in the dog door. Dog's not happy. And now what are the greens going to do? He smelled foods. Or she smelled foods, so she came right in. Suddenly there were feet everywhere. The possum tried to run away from the dog. The dog tried to catch the possum. Nathan tried to stop the dog. Ashley tried to block the doorway. Mr. and Mrs. Green jumped up from the kitchen table and joined the chase. They all ended up in Nathan's room with a frightened little possum hiding under his bed. After things settled down, Mr. Green reached under the bed and scooped up the possum into an empty shoebox. See the funny bend in its tail? shouted Nathan. It's our little possum. What are you going to do with it? I'm just going to take her home to the backyard, Dad said. And that was the right thing to do because the possum seems to be getting along fine even with its broken tail. And so dad takes it to the back after they finally get the possum out from under the bed. Several weeks later, the possum was prowling around the backyard. As usual, she was looking for good things to eat. Once again, she smelled something very interesting. Her nose pointed up in the air as she followed the smell around to the side of the house where she discovered that a raccoon had knocked the lid off the garbage can. She sniffed at the lid so loudly that the raccoon heard her. It poked its black mask face up out of the can and looked down at her. What are you doing here? It snarled. This is my garbage can. In his bedroom, Nathan heard the snarl and sat straight up in bed. He tossed aside his covers, tiptoed over to the window, looked out and saw the animals. He ran to his dresser, grabbed a flashlight and slipped quietly out his bedroom door in his bare feet. He crept down the hall and out the back door. The door made a loud, squeaky noise when he opened it. So Nathan is going to check out what's going on between the raccoon and the possum. He's probably worried about the possum. It is a little bit small. The raccoon jumped out of the garbage can and ran away when it heard the door squeak. Nathan barely saw his ringtail in the bright light of his flashlight. Nathan heard another noise and shined his flashlight on the garbage can lid. What are you doing here? Nathan smiled. The possum opened her mouth and showed Nathan her 50 shiny, white, pointy teeth. 50 pointy teeth. So that's how she's trying to say, don't get too close. It's okay, little possum, he said. I won't hurt you. He stayed very quiet and turned the flashlight a little to the side so it wouldn't hurt her eyes. The possum closed her mouth and they just stared at each other. She remembered the times when she and the great cat had sat and stared at each other. And suddenly, she wasn't afraid. Nathan shivered in the cold night air. Good night, little possum. Pleasant dreams, he said, and went back to his warm bed. The possum found her way into the garbage can and enjoyed the remains of the Green family's dinner. Then she waddled off to sneak through Rocky's other dog door into the Green family's garage. It was time to take a short nap in the warm nest she'd made in some cardboard boxes by the end of the workbench. So now she gets, she, Nathan sees her up close. Now she gets to eat out of the trash can like possums will do. And then she finds a safe place in the garage, which possums will do if they have a way in. Around five o'clock every morning, just before she climbed into her nest in the garage for the day, the possum trotted across the street to hunt tasty earthworms on the neighbor's front lawn. One morning as she reached the middle of the street, she heard a loud noise. Her eyes were blinded by two bright lights. She turned and opened her mouth to show the lights her shiny, white, pointy teeth. Whoa, look out, little possum, shouted the driver of the car that was about to hit her. He was delivering newspapers. He swerved and barely missed her. I wonder why they always open their mouths just before you hit him, he said to himself. He tossed the newspaper onto the green's driveway, shook his head, and drove down the street to the next driveway. So that's something else that happens to possums in their meanderings. They cross roads to find food and sometimes get into trouble with cars. So fortunately, this little possum didn't get hit. Where are all the different places in a yard that a possum can look for food? The dog's dish, the garbage can, under the plum tree, it was nearing the end of summer now and there weren't many plums left, under the leaves where crickets hide, in the bushes where tree frogs croak, on the sidewalk where the snails slide, in the rocks where alligator lizards live. So this is probably another part of the country. We don't have alligator lizards. 
on the walls where moths rest. So if you look really close, this shows the path that the possum has taken to find food. So possums move around a lot to find their food and it could just be the territory of your backyard or a little part in the woods behind your house or in a suburb or a city or a woodlot where they find their food. So they don't, sometimes don't have to travel far, but they are pretty nomadic and don't stay in the same place very long. So he found food all over the place. Early on another morning, just as the possum was sniffing Rocky's food dish, she felt a strong gust of wind on her head. She turned to see where it's coming from. It was a great horned owl swooping down on her from a neighbor's palm tree. She didn't have time to show it her teeth, so she jumped backwards. The clumsy young owl missed her and crashed into Rocky's food dish. The young owl was furious. It clicked its top and bottom beaks together loudly, as owls often do when they're angry, and flew back up into the palm tree. Palm tree, so I'm thinking maybe Florida. Rocky heard the clicking and the clatter and came barking and yapping out through his dog door. This was too much for the possum. Yipes, she thought, and she fainted. So what do possums do when they're scared? There's that owl just trying to get some food, and unfortunately he was trying to get the possum. Possums will play dead when they're scared and their whole body slows down. So that's what happened. Sometimes when possums are really frightened, they faint and other times they just close their eyes and fall over and play dead. When an animal, when a possum does this, a little gland at the base of its tail squirts out a very stinky dead smell. So not only do they play dead, but then they smell really bad and most predators don't want to mess with them. Rocky took a big sniff and walked away very fast. The possum got up and went looking for the earthworms, and then she went to bed. She tucked herself into her cozy little nest of cardboard boxes and went to sleep. So I know this is a long book, so if you guys can't watch the whole book, you can always pause and come back to it. That's the, the beauty of the video. It was the first day of school. Nathan and Ashley and Mr. and Mrs. Green were getting ready to drive to school. While no one was looking, Nathan slipped over to where the possum was sleeping. Goodbye, little possum. I'll see you tonight. The possum opened one eye and looked up at Nathan. She didn't even open her mouth to show him her teeth. She just smiled a little possum smile and closed her eye and went back to sleep. So she is living in the garage and mom and dad might not know it, but Nathan sure does. And she's getting kind of used to him, which wild animals will do. One year later, Oh, one year later, she has possums of her own. And that's what possums do. After they leave the pouch, they write on the back. So, that is the end of the book. And now I'm just going to say some quick facts. Because this book does a really good job on talking about possums, natural history, what they eat, how they act, and things like that. How they defend themselves. So, I'm not going to concentrate a lot on it. So possum's a mammal, right? Why is it a mammal? Okay, can you guys answer that? Because it has fur. Okay, we have hair, right? So hair or fur makes a mammal. Warm-blooded or endothermic, they make their own heat in their body, and they bear live young. So the babies are only the size of a piece of rice when they are born. They crawl up into the pouch of the mom, okay? And then when they're big enough, they will ride on her back, okay? So she has live young. She doesn't lay eggs. She says she's a mammal, right? Um, and she nurses her young with mother's milk. Possums prefer to live in wetlands. Also, um, woodlands, farmlands, sub suburbs, and even in cities. So anywhere they can find food and water. They're omnivores. So what is an omnivore? An omnivore eats about anything, and that's what a possum does. So he, she would eat beetles and worms, rats, mice, snakes. That's one of their favorites is snakes. Lots of ticks, so they're really great for tick control. Um, frogs, garbage, fruit, veggies, and roadkill. So roadkill is what gets them in trouble. So they're kind of like the garbage men, like the, kind of like the vultures out there. They're another way to get rid of the stuff after it dies. So they're very, very helpful to us in that way. It's the only marsupial, some cool facts about it. It's only marsupial found in the US. So that means it has a pouch. What other animals do you know of have a pouch? But they don't live in the US, right? They don't live in the United States. So if you can think of other animals, say them real quick before I say it. So tell your mom or dad, what do you think? Koala, 
kangaroo, and the wombat. There's others too, but those three live in Australia. So that's its relatives in Australia. But somehow we have the possum in the United States. It's the only mammal in the U.S. with a prehensile tail. What else can you think of that has a prehensile tail? Hmm. Primates, right? They have a prehensile tail. So she can carry things in that tail. And when I worked at a different place, they had a possum and she, he or she, they had different possums, would carry the straw in her tail to make a little nest. So they can actually do things with that. They're also the only mammal with four um, fingers and an opposable thumb like us, okay, like people. So they have an opposable thumb so that can help them get around, climb trees, build their nests, things like that. So it's used for um, climbing, like I said, getting food out of the ground, things like that. Now they have claws, but I don't know if they can dig quite like a, a skunk. So they're about cat sized, about 16 or 16, six to 12 pounds. Okay, some of our cats are more like 15, 20 pounds, right? Naked ears, okay, this is just a stuffed animal, but usually they have pinkish naked ears that are very sensitive to like the cold. Long scaly tail, it's silver tipped fur, and they resemble a rat, but they are not a rat, okay? They are marsupials. They are very sensitive smell and hearing. Their eyesight is not that great, okay? So they depend on finding their way around and finding food with their nose and their ears, all right? So their defenses, we saw it in the book, right? They, when threatened, one thing they'll do is they'll open their mouth and hiss and show their 50 sharp teeth. 50, how do I do that? 50 sharp teeth, okay? So that will scare some, some predators away. What are their predators? Your dog, okay? Not usually a cat. Um, bobcats, coyote, and what else did I write here? I gotta look it up because I forgot the other. Oh, raptors. So raptors, dogs, coyote, bobcat. Who's the worst predator? I haven't named them yet. Do you guys know who the worst predator of the possum is? And of a lot of animals are? You, okay? Not necessarily you, but people, okay? Humans. Because humans, a lot of times, they don't want them around. They're afraid they're going to carry disease to their animals. So sometimes they move them to another property where they can't live. Sometimes they harm them. And sometimes we accidentally hit them with our vehicles because they're looking for that roadkill. And when the light shine in their eyes, they freeze. So sometimes we just have to give them a chance to get across. A lot of times we can do that if we're on a road where lots of cars aren't going by and, and we're not getting hit by a car right behind us, right? So as adults, we can watch for wildlife a little bit and try to get, let them pass, okay, without getting hit. Um, they also play dead. Now, I believe the playing dead is an auto response. It's just an automatic response, okay? So um, my dog brought in a possum one night. Didn't hurt the possum. <laughs> the possum had gotten into where the dog lives in the fenced area, and he, came, he brought it in, and it was just like passed out, okay? Didn't even register that I had picked it up, and it stunk. It had gone to the bathroom, so pretty gross, okay? Really stinky, so it let out that smell. The book talked about it, but also other stuff. And when it finally woke up, I was cleaning it up, and it finally woke up, it was like, what is happening to me? So it really was in a trance. So it's like an automatic response that when they're in real danger, they kind of like faint. And their whole metabolic process, all their metabolic processes slow down. So it's pretty cool defense, okay? Um, and predators don't usually eat dead stuff, so then they'll leave them alone. Plus, they smell. Like Rocky, the dog, he was like, oh, that is disgusting. I'm getting out of here. So... Now, some other cool stuff. When do they come out? They come out when bats and owls come out. So they are nocturnal and possums and sometimes cats. So um, they are nocturnal. So they hunt at night um, because they have such, they can see at night probably better than we can, but they have really good smell and hearing to find their way around. 50 plus teeth, like I said, playing dead automatically. Pretty cool technique for protecting yourself. A marsupial, again, very cool, like a superhero, man. I mean, a marsupial, we don't have, we don't, the only one in the United States, the possum, is the only marsupial. The 50 teeth, frightening, right, to most predators. Um, that it can see at night and hunts at night, pretty cool, right? Most superheroes can't do that. 
and eats tons of ticks. Raise your hand if you like ticks. Anybody? Anybody out there like ticks? I can't stand ticks. It's like my least favorite thing after mosquitoes. So ticks can really cause us problems. They can cause disease. These guys eat a ton of ticks and they clean their fur a lot like cats. And when they um, clean their fur, they get the ticks off themselves. And when the ticks get digested, they're dead. So they are the best defense that I know of, that I've heard of for ticks. Chickens can get ticks. You know, they, they eat ticks, mice and other animals, but the possum seems to be the best. Um, so very helpful animal to us. And I think just a very cool animal out there. Um, so possum, so the babies, I'm going to talk about this more on, um, later this week about what to do when you find a baby possum. There's another video on Facebook, um, on YouTube and Facebook that I might use. I may add to it. Um, so sometimes about 14 plus babies are born, little tiny ones. They crawl up to the pouch and they attach themselves to mom's nipple until they're about two plus months old. They leave the pouch and ride on mom's back. So for about three to four months, they'll stay with mom. And sometimes, like the little possum in the book, they kind of fall off and then they're on their own. So about a pencil size possum from nose to the butt is big enough to be on its own, okay? Um, now, if they're injured, that's another issue. You know, you might have, you have to call a rehab center. But for the most part, usually if you find a baby possum, um, it's probably old enough to be on its own. If it's pretty tiny, like smaller than a pencil, um, then you need to call a rehab center to help. Now, um, if you don't want possums around, don't leave your pet food out or your trash. Close your trash cans. Um, pick food and pick fruit and garden crops when they are ripe to discourage possums. Do not leave rotten fruit on the ground. Now, to me, I'm like, great, go ahead and get it. I leave all that for my wildlife and my chickens. Eliminate brush piles, old buildings, holes under concrete slabs. Those are like possum hotels, okay? So they love to get in that stuff. So you wanna kind of clean up around if you don't want animals hiding there. Now, if you do want them there and you think they're cool to watch, give them some brush piles and stuff to live in. Not necessarily trash in your yard, but they love wood piles and brush piles and things like that. Um, secure pet doors at night. We do that at my house because possums may venture in and maybe even a raccoon. So you might not want that. Um, if you just want your dogs in the house and your cats, maybe just close that off at night and keep everybody inside at night. It'll protect your animals better and it'll keep possums from getting in. Um, and if you do want them, great. If you see one in your yard, just leave it alone and let it do its job. They are very helpful to the environment. They eat a lot of dead stuff, a lot of bugs, a lot of ticks and rodents. And for some of us, we're glad they eat snakes. I love snakes, but um, that's one of their food sources too. All right, so that is our program about possums, one of my favorite animals. Now, this is a program with the New Carlisle Library, and Miss Maggie wants you to have the secret word, which is marsupial, okay? M-A-R-S-U-P-I-A-L, all lowercase. So you can give this to Miss Maggie to enter into her reading contest, all right? So marsupial. All right, you guys, I hope everybody has a great day and enjoys this wonderful weather that we're having. It's fa fabulous outside. All right, until next time. Bye-bye.